Painting a good painting is about getting your values right. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I've been working on my portrait skills. Like I've been practicing a lot and I've been, I've been doing the work and I'm always interested in finding out the most effective and efficient way to get the job done. I always see a lot of artists make a grayscale painting and then afterwards color it. And I never knew how they did that. Sometimes I tried and I give up so quickly because it just looks murky and it, it don't look good. It don't look good. Usually when I do a portrait study, I'm painting what I see and I'm trying to make it work, right? But I'm simultaneously trying to get the values right and the colors right. So why not split it up and focus on value first and then you can throw in color after. That's what a lot of artists do. I never understood how they do it. If your values are messed, then your painting is not gonna look solid. It's not gonna look realistic. The lighting's not gonna hit. But I recently bought a tutorial from Chuck P Comics on turning your grayscale painting into color. I'll link the tutorial down in the description. And I thought, what better way to, to get better as an artist than to follow a tutorial on something I don't know how to do. So I'm gonna try a brand new method of painting and see if it's better than what I'm currently doing. So let's start with finding a reference. So first things first, I'm going on Pinterest and I'm looking for some portraits that I could hit. Now Chuck's reference is a straight on face, which if you know anything about me. So I'm kind of thinking that my first attempt at this should probably be kind of in the similar angle. I was really stuck between these two portraits because they're both that similar front facing angle and it looks like there's a wide value range. And also I like those pictures. I was looking for an image that had really bright highlights because I thought those were really fun. I really, I really like hitting that the purest white. And I thought maybe I should do a side view, maybe a, a three quarter, but if I know anything about me, is that I always push myself a little too far before learning the basics. This first reference image, I really like the bounce light, the cool bounce light. It really contrasts her skin tone as well as the hard shadow under her braid. I think that's nice. I love her freckles. There's some hard angles of the shadows. I really like that. But then when I look at the other reference, I really like the overall shapes of the hat and the hair and the shirt. I really like the colors. I also really like the shapes of the shadows on her. And although there's not as bright highlights on her face. I think this one speaks to me a little bit more for my first one. Before we move on to painting, let's talk about today's sponsor. Welcome to Unveil, a home for your OCs. A place where you can join the community, group your OCs, artwork, written content, all together in a single world. You can share your maps, lore, and a bunch more about your universe. Unveil is proudly never NFT and anti-AI art. It is an artist first world, and that's what I love about it. You can change the color of the OC page to match the aesthetic of your character. You can add traits to your OC, like their age, birthday, likes, dislikes. You can add writing for lore, backstory, any info you want. It's a really cool way to keep all of your thoughts on these rich characters that you make in one place for everyone to see. It's really easy to create your own profile and add characters to your page create new worlds for your characters. I personally really like looking at what other people make. Like I like looking through the spider Sona tab. You know, I love a good spider Sona. Motivation and self-esteem are so important for creators. And a place like this is really great to get feedback from other people and connect with the community. Unveil is completely free. And I have a link in the description where you can sign up and create your own OC and world. Now let's get back to the video. I dropped my two images into Photoshop and I end up going with the reference that we all know that I'm gonna choose. I start tracing over the image because this isn't a, like a like a drawing test for me. This is a painting test. So I'm drawing over it. I'm tracing over it. It's a guide. I don't mind. I'm also trying to stylize it after I do that. I'm lowering the eyes. I'm making the neck thinner, trying to cartoonize it a little bit more in my style. It's very subtle, but you know, I think it works flipping the canvas to see if, you know, my, my sketch looks right. Cause if the sketch doesn't look right, then the whole painting's not gonna look right. So I make sure my sketch is how I like it before moving on. Now I'm starting to paint in the flats. I'm following Chuck's tutorial. This is how he does it. He, he starts with a flat of the entire silhouette and then layer by layer, you add different little pieces to it which is what I'm doing. And it's, it, I'm, I'm trusting the process here. Usually I don't do it this way, even though I probably should. I made her eyes look a little bit different than the one, than the reference. She's looking in a slightly different direction, which I think kind of bites me in the ass a little bit later because something about the highlights in the eyes 
it, we'll worry about that later. So now that I have my flats, I'm starting to organize my layers the way Chuck suggests it with different multiplier layers and different screen layers. So I'm trying this, this crazy new method out, right? And then I'm just changing the values of the flats to kind of match the colors of the girl before moving on with placing in my shadows. I start placing my shadows down, jumping through my different opacities of the multiply layer. Um, this is a method I've never done before, not changing the brush color until much later. So it's all the same value, just on different opacities. And I'm trying to layer it nicely. I'm trying to kind of figure out how to do it. I'm, I'm pretty much keeping my canvas pretty like zoomed out. I'm basically looking at the navigator really small while I'm doing this. I'm barely looking at the canvas where my pencil is touching because I really want to see the overall sh shapes of the lights and the darks. I'm trying to just like sketch in the big overall shapes and not focus about the details. And I really get caught up on the details. And at this point you can see I'm just a little bit focusing on the details when I shouldn't be. So after this, I start backing up and I'm pretty zoomed out and I'm forcing myself to say, stay zoomed out. So then I can focus on the overall picture. I'm doing the face first. I'm trying to hit all the values in the face before moving on to the neck, mostly because I forgot about the neck, but it's pretty quick to place all these like lights and shadows down. Like I remember when I first started doing this, it was it was so time consuming and it never looked right. I wish I found this method a long time ago. There, there's so much less to focus on when you're just focusing on value to start with. At this point, it's starting to take shape. Like my most darks are pretty much as dark as the darks from the reference. On the face, there's something going on with the eyes, something a little bit funny that I'm not too sure about. And I think I noticed this in the sketching phase. I was like, oh, I'll figure it out later. Big mistake, first mistake, last mistake. So the screen right eye is a little bit weird and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I think that maybe I sketched it out wrong, but you know, we move on and we learn. So I'm continuing on to flesh out the shadows and the highlights. I'm using a lot of the airbrush on dissolve mode. I think that that really imitates pores really well. And it adds that texture that I feel like I'm typically missing in my portraits. A lot of my portraits have been very soft. So I'm trying to throw in as much texture as I can so it doesn't have that soft airbrushed look. Another mistake that I did is that I chose different gray colors on a single layer because at the very end, it's not gonna be gray anymore. You're supposed to take that entire layer and change it to like purple, for example. But since I have multiple tones on my one layer, Layer. Ooh, it's a, uh, I find it out the hard way a little bit later. I tried to fix it, but I don't know this at this point. I'm working on the hat. I forgot about the hat. Last thing I'm trying to do, trying to get those tones right and trying to keep the overall shapes within the hat very graphic because I'm not gonna draw all those knit, right? I'm just gonna use a brush to, to insinuate the texture of the hat. And I think it works well. I also forgot the necklace. So I'm throwing in the necklace at the very end. I kind of wish I didn't put the necklace in. It just, um. I don't know, maybe if I had it start from the start, I would have liked it, but because I threw it at the end, didn't feel like it worked, you know? At this point, I feel like my painting matches really well with the grayscale and it's time to start coloring. So I'm taking all my flats and I'm starting to put color on them. At this point, I was confused. At this point, I was noticing things that I did wrong. I was freaking out. I was like, oh God, how am I gonna fix this? It didn't look right. And at this point is usually when I give up on a grayscale method because it looks so murky. It's it's gray multiplied on color. So obviously it's gonna look weird. And um, so I decided to take a step back and I just wanted to color the flats, right? And then I'll, I'll figure it out as I go along. So I'm kind of separating this dark parts of the hair onto a different layer, seeing if that fix my situation. And then it's also really hard to find the same value in color of the like multiply. I didn't understand how to choose a color that would not make the shadow lighter than the value is. So that was a little bit tough, but you know, I think it changed a little bit, but overall I kind of figured it out. From this point out, I'm just locking my shadow and light layer and like airbrushing kind of different colors on it, trying to match my reference as much as I can and even popping out some extra colors as much as I can. 
on. It's starting to take shape. I'm starting to add new layers on top as well to add like little fluffs of hair or little things that, you know, the shadows didn't quite, you know, catch. And by the end, I, I like the grayscale better just because I feel like it matches so well the values. And once I added color, like if I squint, they're not quite the same. And you know, maybe it's not about making it the exact same. It's about your interpretation. But you know, my intention was to try to make the colors as close of a match as possible. I think I should have maybe made her skin tone a little lighter. I think that maybe some parts of shadows are a little too dark. I don't know. It's my first attempt and honestly, she slays. So after a few touches here and there, I'm basically done. And now you get to see the final result. I take a look at it in black and white and I'm like, perfect chef's kiss. And then I took a look at it in color and I'm like, yeah, that's good. That that's good, right? I really enjoyed the process of this method and I can see how with a little bit of tweaking of how I would approach it, I think that this would be such a better way. By tackling the values first, I can really focus just on the values because like 90% of this painting was just doing the values. At the very end, throwing in colors took barely no time. So thank you, Chuck, and you guys should download his tutorial because I found it very helpful and I think you would too. Let me know what you think about the painting. Like this video if you want to get Chuck's tutorial. I have a full speed paint video of my process and my Patreon if you want to check it out. And I'll see you next time. Bye.